In Alberta, there is an average of 10 tornadoes per year. Between 1982 and 1986, the annual average was 18. This increase reflects the growing population of Alberta and a better reporting network. It is estimated that roughly one tornado per year reaches severe damage intensity. Recent tornadoes of this strength include Rocky Mountain House, 1982, Athabasca, 1984, and the following video of the Lloydminster tornado, 1983, which caused over $1 million damage. This is a videotape of a tornado that came close to Lloydminster. Friday, July the 8th, 1983. Due to the relatively sparse population of Alberta, tornadoes rarely strike populated centers. However, prior to 1987, there have been seven tornadoes reported in Edmonton City. None of them caused personal injury or significant property damage. The last 10 days of July 1987 had been hot with temperatures and dew points at or near record values. There had been numerous occurrences of severe thunderstorms in Alberta during this period. Friday, July 31st, dawned sunny. The air mass continued to have the potential for severe weather. Thunderstorms developed along the foothills. By early afternoon, they were moving across central Alberta. At 1.40 p.m., the Alberta Weather Center issued a severe weather watch for the Edmonton region. A severe weather warning for Edmonton City and surrounding counties was issued at 2.45 p.m as an approaching line of thunderstorms intensified. At 2.55 p.m., a rope-like tornado was observed near Leduc, 25 kilometers south of Edmonton. It lasted only a few seconds. At about 3.01 p.m., the tornado reformed near Beaumont, northeast of Leduc. A tornado warning was broadcast at 3.04 p.m. for Edmonton City and the county of Strathcona. Over the next hour, the tornado remained in contact with the ground, moving almost due north and covering a distance of 37 kilometers. The tornado path width varied from 100 meters to 1.3 kilometers. The tornado was classified at the F4 level, which means it produced devastating damage and winds of 331 to 417 kilometers an hour. The tornado caused 27 deaths, injured over 300, and resulted in more than $300 million damage. The first damage occurred near Beaumont. Numerous farm buildings were destroyed, many livestock killed, and the first citizens injured. Yeah. I can't even see it. It's so dark. Well, a cow. Well, don't, we don't have cameras out here, you know. There you go. As the tornado approached Ellerslie Road, the visible funnel disappeared, but damage was still occurring at ground level. At times, debris could be seen flying near the ground. In this video, the tornado was in the right third of the wall cloud. I came ready to cross the field. Lightning was striking down. It was awesome. Watching if we've been following it for the last month. Wow. Oh, Cal's still alive, eh? I guess so. Carried those silos. I think they were over on the other side of the field. Really? As the tornado approached the eastern edge of Mill Woods, many small funnels, known as suction vortices, became visible. 
These vortices are within the main funnel of the tornado. These would briefly disappear and then a large cone would form. Numerous homes and farm buildings were destroyed and there were a number of injuries.
trying. It's, it's, not, a it's not coming over here like your mother said. It's not a tornado anyway. It's a cloud now. Tornado's, tornado's gone. I didn't even get to get it on tape. Oh, man. You filmed it up? Yep. Holy, Holy cow! cow. Yeah. Stop it! Ryan, Ryan. You bet. Get downstairs! Will you get downstairs? Yes. Look at that tornado. Woo. Wow. That hail the size of golf balls here beating off the windows too. Well, there's a tornado lifting up in the air again. Yeah, that's a strong tornado out there somewhere, and there it is. There's a good shot of it. Oops. This one got hit by a chunk of three inches thick of hail. Oh, there goes somebody's window. And there it is, it's lifting up again. Yep. Back down to the ground. One heavy duty tornado over there. The tornado was at its most intense strength in the industrial area. This video was taken from the building housing the Alberta Weather Center. Yeah, it's coming this way, you know that? Those clouds are coming this way anyway. Yeah, I just pulled my brother-in-law out of the yard. 
Got the video camera going. Look at the police blocking the highway off back there. Oh shit, yeah. Stelco is gonna be. <laughs> what happens if those refineries don't hold up? In West Edmonton very shortly. <laughs> We'll be in West oh, look at it ripping up the, looking at, look at it pull up the root, the top off the tanks. Watch the windows are closed. Holy shit. Hopefully they don't go or we will go. Look at the smoke coming out of Stelco there.
Here, industries were obliterated. Cars and trucks were tossed around like toys. Trains derailed, and 12 people lost their lives. The tornado continued northward into the river valley. The visible cone was wide but did not appear to touch the ground. Still, there was extensive tree damage in the valley as well as significant damage at the Strathcona Science Park. The tornado intensified as it left the river valley, striking the easternmost parts of the Clairview subdivision. There was severe damage to homes in this area, with three houses completely demolished. The tornado then veered to the northeast and was in a very thin rope-like stage as it moved into the evergreen trailer park area. 
the tornado was still very powerful. It destroyed 133 mobile homes, injured approximately 100 persons, and caused 15 fatalities in the park. A few hundred meters beyond the trailer park, the tornado dissipated. One hour had elapsed. During the next month, three funnel clouds were sighted over or very near Edmonton. Fortunately, they did not cause any damage. Tornadoes are to be expected every summer in Alberta. It is important that Albertans be aware of and be prepared for this violent part of nature.